Well, good afternoon, fellow beach people, whether you're beach cleaner, beach enthusiast, beach trash fan, whatever the case is, thanks for joining me on this beautiful afternoon where I decided I'm going to go out in search of cigarette butts, which of course I've done before if you've seen my other videos, but a friend sent me another news article just the other day about how cigarette butts are now the number one most, I guess, commonly found ocean plastic pollution item. So. I have a little bit more I want to say about that as we walk down and try to find some cigarette butts and unfortunately I don't think we will find a uh, shortage of them. They're pretty much everywhere, especially this time of the year. Uh, it's summer, people are flicking cigarette butts in a lot of these local parking lots. As beautiful and in the middle of nowhere we look here, we're kind of in between a couple of parking lot spots. So. Yeah, I'm just going to hike for about an hour and I want to see if I can get a hundred cigarette butts in that time. I, again, don't think I'll have any problem, unfortunately, but the first step is to find a cigarette butt uh, receptacle. So that shouldn't take very long either. So I'm going to try to start this hike, see if I can find a bottle or a cup or something to collect our cigarette butts in because that will save us having to use up a bag. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the statistics and facts behind cigarette butt pollution and uh, maybe a little bit more what we can do to stop that because it's none too good. So let's uh, get our pickers, get hiking and see what we can find. This bottle looks pretty good, but it's kind of crushed. So we'll leave this, I'll come back for this eventually, but Let's try to find a, a broader rim cup or something like that to use. Ah, here's a novel idea. So this is not quite what I was expecting, but much like in beach cleaning as in life, you uh, work with what you're given. And this balloon here, I think we can use. Um, we can actually pop it, tear it open, and use it like a beach clean trash bag. Sounds like a plan to me. I think this will easily hold 100 cigarettes. And it is awful ocean plastic pollution now, so uh, not a bad find. I think this is gonna work. I often say if you can't find trash down by the water or even up by the dunes, the stretch in between often has these reedy tide lines and those have a ton of trash, especially tinier pieces, ropes, bottle caps, and of course cigarette butts. So I'm going to hike along this tide line and I think I'll start to find um, plenty of butts within this reedy mass. They're hard to distinguish sometimes from the reeds themselves, but when you have a uh, trained trash eye, which does develop <laughs> over time, believe it or not. I can't believe I'm saying that's a thing, but it is. You start to be able to pick them out a little bit better. So I'll show you some close-ups of exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about here. This tiny out of focus butt. Let's put it up on there, try to get it in frame. So you can see that there is a cigarette butt, but look at how similar it is to the reeds around it. And of course that's all plastic, uh, that cigarette butt or mostly plastic. So I'm gonna keep kind of really scouring this area. And uh, again, I think we'll find plenty. Another nice little beach clean trick, if you have a bag like this, that's really light and blowing around in a light breeze like this even, um, just take a stone. A lot of beaches don't have stones, at least on the sandy part by the water, but this one does. And if you do, you take a stone and you just plop it in to help weigh it down. That way it won't blow away on you. I've had beach cleans where the first few minutes I pick up a bunch of scraps especially, but if the bag's too light, you put it down for a minute, it goes flying away. Uh, so cigarette butts are sort of like that. They're super light, at least starting out. Um, so just make sure, you know, especially if you're doing recyclables or something, you take the rocks back out. Um, but putting a rock or two in can really help weigh down that bag so it doesn't go off uh, to trash land on you. Oh, 
Oh look, cigarette lighter. Maybe we can use this to uh, smoke some of the leftover butts. I don't think so. It's a classic one right there. Well, that's that's strange. It's just a rope coming out of the ground. I swear you see something new every beach clean. So while we're walking, I think it's worthwhile to just clear up a couple of things about cigarette butt pollution, ocean pollution. Uh, the first of which is that most of it comes from the beach and I don't think that's actually accurate. I think most of it is probably coming as runoff from streets and parking lots that of course are maybe nearby or adjacent to the beach. But I mean, I've cleaned up on rivers hundreds of miles inland and you see that type of trash that again, is washing down from uh, streets and other places into the rivers, which ultimately make it to our lovely ocean here. So proof of point is the fact that I do find some cigarette butts um, in the sandier parts that, you know, yeah, people are just flicking them as they're walking smoking. Unfortunately, I do see that, but I think much more of it is getting run down to the water from these other sources. And again, proof of point, you can see that they collect in these tide lines where they get tangled up in the reeds. So yeah, um, we found several already, but I think if we go into this less actually trafficked part, we're gonna find a lot more because it's not where people are thinking to go look for them. So let's see what we can find. Again, proof of point right here, you see this old degraded butt within these reeds. I don't think somebody just left this in these reeds here. I think it got swept up in these reeds. Again, maybe somebody did flick this butt on the beach, but there's so many parking lots right by here that it's really not hard to imagine, again, a big enough rainstorm washing them away, wind, whatever the case, um, into the water, and then they get, again, stuck in these tidal reeds. But yeah, that's uh, plastic. So unfortunately, we've had a bit of a uh, makeshift bag malfunction as you can see <laughs> so we might have to find something else and uh, stuff this in it too these things happen when you uh, use makeshift trash bags another good tip for cleaning tide lines like this is you can see how there's multiple lines and those mark kind of I guess multiple different high tide marks so I like to walk down one and pick up along that and then on the way back walk along the other it saves you from accidentally doing the same one twice, which you can still find stuff that you overlooked the first time, but I feel as if you're much more likely to stumble upon new stuff, obviously, if you're in a, a new tide line. So good little trick there. You know, it's funny too, because I was walking and I didn't find a bunch for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden I found, I don't know, like 10. So you just gotta be patient because you don't know where other people are picking up and maybe they've cleaned one stretch, but they might've stopped and headed back. And then all of a sudden, you're picking up where they left off. So yeah, just because you start going out hiking and you don't see much doesn't mean that um, you won't find some if you keep going. So patience is a virtue uh, as um, with beach trash, um, as with in life, it's a little hot out here. Whew. So we're about half an hour in, which means uh, it's about time to turn back and go along that other tide line, as I said. But yeah, it never fails to amaze me. I'm in this sort of very thick trashy patch right now how much different um how many different types of trash i find and you know i've done hour beach cleans where i find close to a thousand cigarette butts believe it or not um so i'm not finding a ton will i get to 100 we'll see on the way back uh definitely going to be close but don't know if i'll quite get there today uh but in any event <laughs> there's unfortunately way more other stuff to pick up so maybe we'll fill our bag with some of that um as we head back too so uh, let's keep uh, keep the hunt up though for a little bit longer. I mean, just look at how many different types of plastic bits are absolutely littered in these tidal patches. It's crazy. Yeah, I can't help to think that I'm just not noticing a bunch of them amidst the reeds, but um, I'm still getting some, so I'm gonna finish up here and then hike on back, like I said, because I want to. Uh, stay true to the challenge of just an hour. Uh, 
Aha. Uh -huh. Now we're cooking. That looks like it was made for cigarette butts. Oh yeah. All right, well, I'm not gonna lie to you, but we didn't get a ton. Um, so let's count them quick, see how many we actually did collect uh, in our one hour cleanup. All right, well, we actually cleaned up 39 of these cigarette butts, which is uh, more than I thought. You know, when you're getting into it and you're um, deep, sort of meditatively picking up one piece at a time, you kind of lose track. So I thought it was actually fewer than that. But anyways, um, yeah, it's weird. I'm oddly sort of disappointed, not because I wasn't finding trash per se, but because I know it's out there. Um, and if I had gone down the other way, who knows, maybe I would have found a hundred cigarette butts, uh, which again was my goal. Um, I know some other spots with some other parking lots nearby that I'll probably try in the coming weeks to uh, get more cigarette butts, try this challenge again. But as I was saying, um, I'm not disappointed because there isn't trash out here, just because based on the statistics, I know it exists. And uh, if it does, I want to find it. Um, and even 39 cigarette butts that you collect, I was doing some math or trying to do some math the other day. And I calculated that Well, I researched and found that 400 or Americans make 400 million trips to the beach every year. So if you multiply 400 million trips to the beach by 39 cigarette butts, that gives you a whole lot of cigarette butts that could be cleaned up. And again, as far as I know, these are all, or mostly plastic now. Um, you know, there's a lot, if you just Google plastic cigarette butt cigarette filters, um, you'll find a lot more information out there. So anyways, um, what we can actually do about this, I don't know. I mean, I even saw a guy fishing and smoking a cigarette. Will he dispose of that responsibly? Who knows, I've seen, <laughs> seen it go both ways, so. Um, you know, I think there are probably little things, um, obviously cleaning them up when you find them, but ultimately we need to sort of shift away from this nonsense, right? Uh, using plastic filters, that sort of stuff. I don't know what the alternative is, but I think just sort of showing that, well, this stuff is out here and it is a problem is a first step or a step of sorts, I don't know. But anyways, um, yeah, so I'll be back next time, whether I'll do another cigarette butt challenge or um, a different adventure, I don't know. A lot of it's weather depending, other factors depending. Uh, so we'll see, but rest assured, we will be back to do some trashy adventures. So uh, thanks for joining me. It has been a beautiful day, beautiful hike regardless. And uh, like I said, there will be more adventures in different places coming up. So if you like this trashy adventuring on these beautiful beaches that we're trying to keep clean, please like, subscribe, share, if you know of others who you think might enjoy this type of madness, because I do feel as if sometimes I'm losing my mind on the beach talking about cigarette butts, but hey, you could be talking about a lot of other crazy things, right? Uh, so this is maybe a positive, I don't know. But anyways, thanks again for joining. Hope to see you next time. So until then, stay safe out there, be well, clean well, and hope to see you on the beach.